Good morning, Ted. Good morning. <laughs> so, uh, this morning we're with Ted Rainville. Uh, he's an Umpqua Indian down here in Southern Oregon. He's a board member for the Umpqua Indian Utility Board, uh, the UIUC. And uh, Ted and I met about 10 years ago or so. Um, I was a contractor. Uh, well, I worked for a contractor as an electrician. And uh, Ted, being with the utility uh, corporation down here, uh, had us down there, and that's how we met. And, of course, the love of archery and, and all things hunting-wise, uh, of course, struck a bond. When, when Joe and I started the traditional hunting film, A Fistful of Arrows, we were finding a lot of artifacts. When we were in the desert working on these films, we'd find these broadheads, and some of them were, they're all beautiful, but some were, like, intact. And I got to thinking, how cool would it be if... I was able to attach this to an arrow and go hunting with it and use it for its intended purpose, you know. And uh, I don't know how old it is, you know, but they're, they're in good shape. And according to Ted here, if they don't shatter, they're good because um, cool. they don't generally dull. And even though it may be hundreds of years old, and I don't know how old this thing was. And, uh, but I was running into, of course, at the time, you're like, what do you, you know, you can't just duct tape it on and go for it, you know. <laughs> but it was in the back of my head. But you can't, um, according to the, uh, the Antiquities Act, uh, you're not supposed to mess with these, any cultural sites, okay? Um, and so I can take pictures of them, and I have, you know, because they're beautiful objects, you know. But you're not supposed to mess with them. So I expressed interest of taking one of these and putting it on an arrow and hunting with it. Uh, and I talked to some law enforcement about it, and there was a, just a ton of red tape, and basically saying, look, it's not going to happen, and if you do it, you're going to be in trouble. You know, and, and everything I do is pretty much on film, so that kind of took that out of, out of the game. I expressed my displeasure with that, and I was talking about it with Ted here, and uh, he suggested he might be able to help me out with that. So, Ted um, just called me out of the blue a couple months ago and uh, he says what are you doing and I said well you know I'm nothing and he says I got something for you so Ted in his spare time which is most of the time anymore <laughs> which is most of the time uh, he built me some modern I guess they're called fresh um, broadheads out of obsidian and put them on a cedar shaft for me and had me shoot them early in the summer, late spring. And uh, if I can get close enough, I might try to hunt with them. So, Ted, um, you can talk about them if you want. But he's, there was one more of these, and it's the tip is in a apple tree. <laughs> and I have... Part of it there. There's your change. Oh, Ted. that's beauty. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> I can throw that in the desert, and now you can't touch it. Anymore, right. You know. <laughs> so, um, Ted, if you want, you can talk about these guys. They're just they're beautiful. Um, other than pretty, I, I don't know uh, the exactitudes about it. So, I'll let you take it from here. Well, they're a traditional design. Uh, Native Americans made their own glue out of, they call pine pitch glue normally, is what it's referred to. But it's just a mixture of, of pitch, a little bit of beeswax, uh, crushed charcoal, and I used crushed elk manure <laughs> as a binder. Do you <laughs> it, use poop? It, it, yeah, yeah, I was going to say something else, but, <laughs> but it keeps it from getting so brittle to where when you fire it into something that uh, it won't shatter, break loose if it's, you know, if the glue is brittle it had just come all apart and then this is all actual deer sinew uh, these are self knocks that I had to carve in and then it's wrapped with sinew so it doesn't split it doesn't split and uh, the feathers I bought the feathers I could have made my own you the, cheater by the time you get them <laughs> ground and everything it's really not worth your time and uh, normally they're tied on with sinew uh, spiral wrapped but uh, for all intents and purposes, I think these are as close to Native American artifact arrows as we're going to find. All right. And uh, they should work good. They're sharp. They're durable. You've shot them several times into your target. I have now, yeah. And uh, they're just allergic to trees <laughs> or rocks. <laughs> right. 
but it's got uh, bands of different colors mixed in. Like this one looks sort of like zebra stripe. Yeah, that's going to be my, my number one. Either I'm going to miss with it or I'm going to kill something. Because all this is is nature's glass. It's volcanic glass. And I was told this all came from the Glass Buttes area from Eastern Oregon. And you actually traded for this, right? I traded some uh, lapidary equipment for it. <laughs> this, is a, this is a beautiful one here. Yeah. Razor sharp. There was another one just as pretty that's in an apple tree. <laughs> yeah. I think about the, the most fun of making these arrows is wrapping the broadhead on. That's when it starts to look like something. Boy, that sure is nice, Ted. Uh, fantastic job. So here's what my, my hunting setup is going to look like. Uh, I've got uh, the inside arrows are from Addictive Archery out of Salem and uh, they've got the shelf cut and the Seattle Seahawk look. Uh, Andy Ponce built them and then uh, on the outsides are going to be my sp Ted's spirit arrows and right now these are knocked here because they're uh, they're my my practice arrows, my target. Like Ted said, he the, the legit ones that I'm hunting with are the self-notched. So, yeah, we'll get to shooting them in a little bit, and uh, that's going to be my setup. So here's uh, just a side-by-side -side comparison showing the, the similarities, really, and, and the size uh, between the modern carbon fiber uh, and steel broadheads versus the cedar shaft. Now, of course, my carbon fiber shaft's a little skinny thing, and Ted's got the big fatties here. But um, the broadheads are, are very close to the same. These here are 125 grain broadheads, and I have 100 grain outserts, so I got, I'm nose heavy. I'm 225 grain up front. It's really straightened my arrow flight out, and uh, Andy Pond's got me set up with that. And then Ted's arrows, these cedar, they do run a little slower than these uh, carbon fiber, and these are approximately about 125, something 120, like that. 123 to 127. 123, I mean, it's, you know, when you're, yeah. when you're napping, it's hard to, uh, I don't mean... It's impossible. When, when, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, yeah, you know, it's, so it's... To get the weights Yeah, that. when Ted's like, hmm. Yeah. I'm going to get about 20 yards away, which is, hunting-wise, effectively where I want to be. I've been shooting all summer, both Ted's arrows and Addictive Archery's arrows. They're, they're pretty close. They shoot the same at, at 20. There's not much distance for them to vary away. Um, and... Between 25 yards and 20 yards, my group, um, no doubt, is one heck of a lot better. But, you know, between just hitting the animal and making a kill shot, you know, generally at 20 yards with both arrows, I'm 9 out of 10 um, or better. At 25, it's 50-50. It's that 5-yard difference is absolutely massive. So I'm only going to get about 20 yards away, which... <sighs> The, the game gets harder once you get once you break 50 yards and then it be starts and you're sneaking in it's it just becomes there's more time that things can go wrong whether it's the wind shifting or the sun finally getting that making the thing stand up and wanting to get more shade or he just sees you and so breaking 40 getting to 40 yards totally doable um once you get in there um you know i like i never felt that traditional shooting is much harder than uh, a compound but you have to get closer i have to get closer so if i get 20 man it's you know it should happen at 25 i probably might not want to shoot this year you know i made a change on all my arrows uh they're on those heavy now 225s just for knockdown power and uh Ted Rainville's arrows, his spirit arrows, you know, they're lighter, but they're slower. And so I don't want to give that, I don't want the buck to hear the shot before it, the arrow gets there, the snap of the limbs. So I also put moleskin on my limbs for the string to slap that instead of the, uh, the limbs themselves. So we're going to shoot at 20 yards here and see a grouping distance. I'm just going to shoot two arrows with uh, Ted's broadheads and cedar shafts versus the steel broadheads and Andy Ponce's carbon fiber. I'm going to shoot a target tip uh, carbon fiber and then I'll shoot one of your super arrows. Good shot. And right hard, I think.
That's impressive. Holy cow! I don't know if I could do that again if I tried, Ted. <laughs> Holy right. cow! See, my old, my old arrows get in there pretty good too, don't yeah. they? <laughs> All right, we're going to admit it, you took those shots, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah with my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's uh, certainly no difference there. And again, you know, we're, we're talking 20 yards. Um, basically, you know, I, I, I expected the group to be close, but I couldn't tell you where it was going to be. So, yeah, I'll take that. You so, can't beat two heart shots. No, no, that's all right. So, uh, anyway, we're going we're gonna to make it happen, Ted. Beauty. Thank you. Well, at 20 yards, there's sure not much of a difference here uh, for grouping or flight difference. You know, and that's, and that's what I'm hoping for. That's what I was wanting. Ted, I think you've done a wonderful job building these arrows. Um, you know, and just absolutely. <laughs> uh, and like Ted said, if uh, they don't break, you know, they're good. So I thought you shot at target point. <laughs> <laughs> right when I shoot, he's like, no! <laughs> so anyway, um, ow. Dude. Yeah, st still sharp. So... Yeah, um, yeah, the carbon fiber, I, I didn't use the target tip, but Dad, wonderful job making these, making these arrows. Um, penetration's good. The penetration on the cedar shafts with your broadheads are every bit the penetration of the carbon fibers. Um, I think you've just, you've outdone yourself, sir. Well, that's um, great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we can knock a couple bucks down. Uh, Joe's going to stick with carbon fiber and steel um, because, uh, as you guys know, this this bow hunting stuff can be hard enough sometimes. <laughs> so, but yeah, if I can get close enough, I'm going to certainly try it at 20 yards. There's no reason I feel that you know this can be done. You know, and so I think we can do it. I just uh, I'm just going to have to get to that 20 yard mark and or what I think is 20 yards and and go for it. But yeah, Ted, thank you for everything you've done over the summer. I know this takes a lot of time. And uh, a lot of effort, and I don't know if you've nicked up your hands doing all this stuff. Uh, no, um, I wear heavy gloves. Oh, okay. You right learn on. the hard way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, just, um, and then I'm going to use uh, Doug's, Doug Michelle's bow here, and and uh, we're going to make it happen. And, Ted, um, I appreciate it, man, and uh, hopefully I can bring the arrow back to you a little bloody. Well, I so. want to get a call from you when you get that big buck on the ground. Okay, I'll, well... <laughs> With today's technology, I'll, I'll send you a text, <laughs> yeah. okay? Okay. Thanks again, buddy. Okay, thank you.